Welcome back to Pokemon Infinite Fusion, where we'll be using only legendaries once again, but this time in Johto. If you haven't watched the first part, make sure to go check out that video after this one, and make sure to stick around for the end as we go through a ton of the coolest fusions available. Also, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and check out our Discord channel to take part in and choose future content. Let's try to hit 5,168 likes. Here's a quick recap of the final team we used in Kanto, and since we're already a champion, Champion there, we won't be taking on these gyms in any particular order, so buckle up for a Johto like you've never seen before. We arrived in Goldenrod by train and were greeted by a bunch of fangirls, which is only natural as we are the champion after all. Speaking of being a new champion, it'd mean a lot to me and the channel if you stuck around for our first ever video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Before you skip ahead, hear me out. Unlike any other raid ads you might have seen, this one focuses on something completely different since Raid has recently premiered a limited animated series called Raid Call of the Arbiter. Episode 1 can be watched now for free in-game and new episodes will continue coming out every Thursday at 10 a.m. EST all the way until July 20th, meaning 10 amazing action-packed episodes. Now believe me when I say I was a little skeptical when I heard that a mobile game was creating an animated series, but the animation looks amazing and Raid never fails to impress with their stunning soundtracks. On top of that, one of my favorite things in any video game is the lore, and so alongside the series, Raid is also introducing champion bios. Champions like Gaelic and even fan favorites like good old Death Knight are going to receive depth, background, and lore, which I am super excited to dive into and learn more about. This is probably the most exciting time to try out the game as a new player and a perfect opportunity to pick it back up if you've walked away with all the awesome things that they're offering with this launch. Everyone who logs into Raid for 7 days between now and July 24th will receive Artak, one of the 5 new characters introduced in the show as a playable legendary champion for free. If you haven't started playing Raid yet, use my link down in the description or scan this QR code on screen to receive a free starter kit including all of this awesome in-game loot like Epic Knight Errant. Thank you guys for all of your support, it really helps out the channel, and thank you Raid for sponsoring this video. Anyways, back to the video. Without wasting a second, we ran straight to Whitney's poison type gym to face off for our first Johto badge. Before getting to fighter, we got to play this fun little mini game, which, by the way, happens to be the last time we enjoy a gym puzzle the rest of this run. After counting and watching baby Pokemon run by several times, I was able to finally get to Whitney, and after seeing we had several Kanto gym badges, she informed us she would not be holding back. Whitney started the battle out with her Meowth Nidoran fusion and we quickly took it out with Batman's Earthquake. Her Hydreigon fusion then came out and was able to survive several Dragon Claws and took us out surviving on very little HP. Brutus then was able to quickly finish it off with Iron Head and her next Nidoran fusion stood no chance against a fusion bolt. Suddenly it was Aegislash fusion against Aegislash fusion. It used Memento to decrease our stats and suddenly sacrificed itself, so we switched out into Goober. Her Zoomerade only took a couple freeze dries and then it fell. We were finally able to take it out and win our first Johto gym badge. Now since this was a new run, I decided it was time for us to go out and catch some new legendary Pokemon. Nearby the town we were able to find Dialga as well as a Jirachi and we added them to our team, which now meant it was time for new fusions. Dialga and Duskull made an amazing dead looking Dialga and Metagross looked like a sharper Metagross. Machop made this Jojo reference which let me know down in the comments if you know what it is. And I don't know why but I really like this Voltorb fusion and the Electrode looked so super funky as well. Jirachi made this spider look awesome even though I absolutely hate spiders, and Breloom looked like this cute little sleepy boy. Driftblim and Jirachi made this amazing Chinese lantern, and this Entei and Entei fusion created an absolutely amazing mega flaming version of Entei. We finished the team off by adding Ho-Oh and Blaziken which I believe is a Digimon but I might be wrong. We also fused Suicune and Talonflame together making this aquatic bird and it was time to press on. We made our way south and battled a few trainers like this Arbok and Kyogre fusion and trudged through the forest full of Pokemon until we made our way to a town that looked like it was having issues with flooding. 
After talking to several townspeople, we decided to look into what might be causing the flooding. Near the water, I found this mysterious man that just got frustrated when I asked him what he was doing, and after bugging him a couple times, he eventually challenged us to battle. We defeated him easily, because he only had a fairly weak Pokemon. After defeating Yusin, we found that he had put shelters down in the well to clog the hole, which caused it to flood, and after talking to the village chief, we got permission to dive into the well and faced our first, but definitely not our last, annoying Johto puzzle. We had to use strength to move these slow pokes over to the shelters, which turned them into slow bros, but it was an absolute pain, and I had to go in again and again and again, and after over an hour of trying to figure out how I was supposed to move these boulders and slow pokes, I finally figured it out. I was able to turn them all into slow bros, which cleared the way, and we were able to drain the well and turn the city back to normal. With the city now no longer flooded, we were able to challenge the second gym, and after after navigating our way through this annoying spiderweb puzzle, we were able to finally challenge the fighting type gym leader, Kurt. It was at this moment that I realized that we were fairly underleveled and I had forgotten to heal all my Pokemon from the gym. So we sent out our Digimon to use Brave Bird and took out his 9chan, but unfortunately he took us out with their Crab Cross and Close Combat. We then sent out our Entei Fusion and realizing we'd sent out a Fire type against a Water type, we switched into Sweet Flame, who we quickly used to take it out with Acrobatics. Kurt then used his Metagross Fusion to take us out and using Hyper Beam he quickly finished us off. His Lucario Rattata Fusion was the last Pokemon that we saw as it took us out, which was embarrassing. After healing, I was confident that we'd be able to take on this gym with our current team. Kurt led once again with his Ninetales Fusion, and after using Psychic, he switched out into Metagross. We realized our Driplip Fusion was doing almost nothing, so we switched into our Mega Entei, who managed to burn it and bring it to red before Kurt switched back into his Ninetales. We managed to get a flinch by stomping on it and then knocked it out. I was sure Entei was about to go down as it had almost no HP and Kurt had just sent in a water type, but I threw a Hail Mary and used Swagger. Somehow in confusion it managed to hit itself twice and it fainted, leaving Entei on the field to face off against his Metagross Fusion again, which went down easily with Flamethrower. We then were able to snag a burn on Slatchamp before fainting and sent out Sweet Flame to finish it off as it loafed around. We then managed to take revenge on his Rattata Fusion with Dive and finished off the battle, winning our second Johto Gym Badge. Wasting no time, we made our way to the next city, fought a smug Miss Massar as well as this adorable Raichu fusion, and as we entered Violet City, Yusin was there shouting something about the ruins of Alf, but I didn't have time for that, seeing as we had badges to collect. As a side note, I found Giovanni sitting in the city trying to escape his wrongdoings, so he's here. We also found a tower full of thugs and bell sprouts that if they caught us, they'd send us straight back to where we came from, which meant one thing treasure. Eventually I was able to make it up past all the floors, danced with some Victor Cruels, and then got a pizza? So I looked up what was supposed to be here and it's a pair of Golbat boots, but I'd picked those up earlier somewhere in this game, so yay for randomized items. Before proceeding to the next gym, I stopped to create more fusions. Dialga and Volcarona made this awesome bug dragon, and you know me, I love Volcarona fusions. Jirachi and Slacking made this funny looking ape, while Sceptile made an actual Christmas tree. I love this cute Corsola fusion with all the fish inside the little bubble, and Steelix and Darker I was pretty cool. This Raichu one looked ready to battle. I also made this Gengar fusion who desperately needed to see a dentist. Dragonite and Mew made this squishy looking little dinosaur, and Mamoswine made... Wait, what the heck is that? Anyways, I went with this Machamp instead because of those cool, translucent looking arms. And I also grabbed a Celebi and fused it with Weavile, which was awesome, but not nearly as cool as this Magnazone. They become a little Martian riding a UFO. I love it. With that, our new team was formed, which meant it was time for Faulkner's Dark-type Pokemon. Now, like I said before, Johto has some annoying puzzles, and I'm not sure if this one just glitched out or what, but every time I would fall, the wind would just keep pushing and it wouldn't stop, so I'd have to leave the gym and come back in to reset it. It took forever to get through this puzzle, but finally I made it through after battling this trainer and its adorable Mew, as well as this gorgeous Darkrai fusion. Finally, it was time to fight Faulkner. He led with Quirock, but our Hoakin managed to take it out with Sky Uppercut. We were then defeated by a frog that I believe's from a Disney movie? I 
think I know this character from somewhere, but I'm not sure, so comment it down below. Anyways, after taking several discharges and running out of healing items, Faulkner switched in to Spiragus, who we then sent out Dark Guard to take out with Dark Pulse. The Dancing Frog came back in, and while almost knocking us out, we managed to take it down. His next Spiritum Fusion went down to our Dialga Volcarona Fusion, and with only one Pokemon left, we sent in our Celebi to finish it off with Discharge, winning the battle and our third Johto Gym Badge. With nothing left to do here, we made our way to Blackthorn City and into Claire's Gym to get our next Gym Badge. This Gym would be using Ghost Types, so we went in, fell through some holes in the floor, and began our battle. Claire's first Pokemon was a reference to a neat little game from my childhood. Comment down below if you know what it was and if you ever got to play with one as a kid. Anyways, it managed to take out our Mewchamp and then it fell to Darkgar's Dark Pulse. Darkgar then managed to get her Giratina Rhyperior Fusion down to red before fainting and our little UFO made short work of it with Flash Cannon. Claire's Unblade was unable to attack for some reason and kept using Last Resort, so it went down easily to Discharge. Cider managed to knock us out after taking a Discharge and Ancient Power, but but luckily our Volcarona fusion was able to land an Iron Tail, finishing it off, leaving one Pokemon remaining. This Hounine looks awesome. Roar Time barely failed to knock it out, so we fall to Dark Pulse. But luckily, the Corsola Jirachi was waiting in the back, and with Brine, we won our fourth gym badge, bringing us halfway to every badge in Johto. Now when we headed north, we ran into some snowy mountains where those boots I mentioned before were gonna come in handy. And just like that, we continued on our journey. What a pretty area. Anyways, with four badges in hand and having arrived in Mahogany Town, I decided to look for more legendary Pokemon. I searched for over an hour before finally finding this Palkia Latios fusion, as well as a Rayquaza Sneasel fusion, adding two more legendaries to the team. Lucario and Rayquaza looked amazing, and Garchomp just became a mashup of both of their mega forms. Gyarados and Rayquaza made Kaido from One Piece, and its reverse fusion created this amazing looking dragon. I also really loved Golem's fusion because it looked like some wise old golem using magic. I fused Latios with Moltres, as well as Mamoswine with Jirachi because the Corsola fusion was just not strong enough. With that, we pressed on to another terrible gym puzzle. After finally scoring a goal, we finally were able to take on Pierce's normal types. Pierce led a Baneri Genesect fusion, and after way too many earthquakes and they continued to just heal, we switched into our Latios Moltres. Flamethrower was able to make quick work of it. Pierce's Vigo fetch then took us out with Brave Bird, but luckily our Celazone was able to knock it out with Discharge. We also were able to knock out his Sleepy Snorlax fusion with Discharge. Pierce's next fusion, a Lumberjack Babarel fusion, knocked us out, but our own Machamp fusion finished it off with Submission. His final Pokemon on Smyrdos was easily knocked out with Psychic, meaning five badges were down and only three more to go. Again, it might seem like we're flying through the gyms, but there are some crazy fusions and events near the end, so make sure to keep watching. Heading west and through a cave, we made our way to Ekrutik? Is that how you say that? Ekrutik City? I don't know, where we were informed that Morty was training in the Burn Tower. So we headed in, and this puzzle was rather easy as it simply involved avoiding some ghastlies and haunters as we ran across planks and finally dropped down to where Morty was. After seeing us brave our way to him, he headed back to his gym. For those that don't know, I use speed up a lot when I'm playing these games, and for most of these puzzles it made it impossible unless I turned it off. This one was actually pretty easy, and we made our way over to Morty and his fairy type Pokemon. We let our Gyarados fusion and then unfortunately fell to Clink Mine's Zap Cannons. Luckily our Mammoth Swine was easily able to finish it off with Earthquake. The next Pokemon Tithe caught then easily tore through our team, which was apparently super weak weak to fire and fairy type, so we had to change up something. We ended up fusing our Rayquaza instead of with Gyarados with Dugtrio and we went back in. Clink Mime immediately fell to an earthquake and Mavoir came out. We swapped in predicting the fairy move into our steel type Mamoswine and managed to take it out with earthquake as well. Dugquaza then came back out.
out and managed to survive a moon blast and knocked out the previously undefeated Tithe Cop. Now the game is set to only have trainers using custom fusions, so I'm not really sure why this looks like that. But even as goofy as it looks, it somehow managed to take out Doug Quaza as well as Jiraswine. Mewchamp then came out and knocked it out, relieving us of looking at it any longer. And his final Pokemon, Togecross, fell quickly to Psychic, winning the battle. I decided to take a look around town and ran into Alder, the champion of Unova, watching some dancers. And after trying to talk to him, he told us we had to defeat each dancer first. They were easy enough to defeat, and after completing this task, Alder rushed forward, finally recognizing us as the Kanto champion. He then informs us that he's supposed to be investigating some mysterious appearance of the Unova legendary dragons in a nearby tower, and instead tasks us with going and finding them. He's really living up to his title of Lazy Champion. Regardless, this was the perfect opportunity to go grab some new legendaries, so we made our way through this horrible bell tower puzzle where you have to maneuver through the darkness. Yeah, I won't torture you with any more of that, but at the top we found a vortex that reacted to the stones we had been given by Alder. We reached our hand in and out came a Reshiram fused dragon Pokemon. We quickly threw out our Master Ball because we ended up burning it and I wanted these legendaries. Now time for a lot more fusions. Kafa Green and Reshiram looked super cool, and Empoleon became this like flaming king. Rapid Ash and Reshiram made what was probably the coolest horse fusion in existence. Hydreigon made this behemoth of a three headed dragon. Paxorus and Celebi made this cute little sharp man, while Vaporeon was incredibly adorable. In the end, I stuck with Celebi and Lapras with this little house that Celebi used to live in on its back. Latios and Clefable made this superhero looking Pokemon, and while Electivire and Dialga made this super villain looking Pokemon, I absolutely loved this Gliscor bat clock, so we ended up keeping it on the team. We also added this ghostly Jirachi. With this new team, we headed back to Alder to inform him of our discovery at the tower. It was then that he informs us that the nearby lake, Colrus, had found what might be the third legendary from Unova, so we headed his way. As we arrive, we see a giant chunk of ice by the lake, so, naturally, I stuck my tongue to it. Let this be a lesson for all of you. When in doubt, lick it. Okay, so I'm being told that I can't suggest that anybody lick anything and that it was all a joke. But what if it wasn't? The ice didn't seem to like it, and after Colrus pulls me off, the entire lake suddenly freezes over, which allowed us to skate out and find Kiram ready to be caught. Anyways, we caught Kiram and returned the lake back to normal by touching, yeah, of course, touching the ice, and continued on our journey. We made it to Newbark Town where we were able to finally talk to Professor Elm. It was then that he informed us that the final two gym leaders were away on the Sevi Isles, and after looking at some lame options for starters, we headed back to Kanto. We took the boat to the Sevi Isles and began our hunt for the final two gym leaders. We had to battle a ton of trainers on our way. This one had a Nurse Lucario, but eventually we managed to find Chuck sitting underneath a waterfall and after seeing who we were, he quickly hopped over to one side of the arena and challenged us to a battle. Chuck led this amazing Jirachi Lucario fusion and after a few earthquakes and healing, we finally took it out. His next Pokemon, Manloon, caused some issues as it used bounce to knock out our Lapras fusion. Luckily it switched out when we sent in Reshigong and Torchop quickly fell. His next Pokemon knocked us out quickly and it nearly defeated our hero fusion as well. Farbuskin then finished us off but fell quickly to a future site from our ghostly Jirachi. Manloon came back out to finish us off so we sent in Dialcore to swords dance all the way up and use X Scissor to finish the battle defeating Chuck. Look at him bounce on his way over to us. While we were exploring, we found a man who said he had gone camping with six kids in the woods. Kinda sus. But the fog rolled in and he had lost him. So we went to help him find him. After finding one who said they were playing hide and seek, we backtracked several times, finding a new kid each time. I felt like I had either gone completely blind or they only appeared one at a time. Anyways, after gathering all the kids, we counted and had seven? Suddenly, one of them transformed into a Pokemon and attacked, but we quickly defeated it. After returning all the children back to the man, he gave us this scary doll and they went on their way. What a weird group of people. 
As we pressed forward, we ran into a group of Corsola that were gathered together blocking our way. Luckily, the scary doll we had received scared them off and we were able to continue to the other islands to eventually find Jasmine, the final gym leader. We started the battle with Stunloom and after doing decent damage with Hydro Pump, it knocked us out with revenge. Luckily, our Latios fusion managed to do enough damage that she switched out, and after healing with Recover, we knocked out her freaky reindeer with Zen Headbutt. Her Pawn Loom stood no chance against our three-headed Reshiram's fusion flare, but then we were knocked out by Dynamic Punch. Our Jirachi fusion managed to knock it out with Aerial Ace, but then was defeated by a final Gambit from her Primate fusion, and her final Pokemon Clef Choke brought our Dugtwaza to 1 HP and we barely managed to finish it off with extreme speed, winning the final battle and earning all eight Johto gym badges. Jasmine congratulates us and suggests we go show Professor Oak all that we have accomplished, so we head back home to do exactly that. When we arrive, we see a strange woman is visiting along with our rival. Cynthia introduces herself as the Sinnoh Champion and mentions that an immensely powerful Pokemon had appeared at Mount Silver. She invites us to come face it with her, and with that, it was time to run to the mountain. But before we do that, it's time for a ton, and I mean a ton, of fusions, so buck up. Celebi and Aegislash become this cool knight riding a sword, and its reverse is this adorable little fairy knight. Arcanine and Jirachi was stunning, and Kyogre made Mega Pidgeot even cooler. Suicune and Kyogre were meant to be, while Rayquaza made this amazing kaiju looking creature from Pacific Rim. Kyogre and Dusclops also made a fusion that anyone who played Subnautica would recognize. Rayquaza and Gardevoir made this elegant but powerful looking fusion, and Palkia turned Mega Salamance cosmic. Two of the best ghost type Pokemon made this Grim Reaper fusion, while Groudon and Raichu made this unexpectedly awesome fusion. Look at all that electricity. Entei and Corsola was just too cute to leave out, while Raikou and Mamoswine wasn't cute, but the northern lights on its back were awesome. Arceus and Mewtwo made this obviously powerful looking fusion, while Mew and Arceus opened up a new dimension. Blaziken always looks so good in fusions, and Arceus was just more proof of that. While Groudon became this chained up god, Restoram and Charizard became the ultimate dragon, and Swampert and Zekrom looked seriously mean. Deoxys and Magnezone made this? I feel like this is a reference to something, but I'm not sure. Regigigas and Kafagrigas looked amazing, while Corsola continued to make legendaries beautiful. Oh, you thought we were done? Not quite. Ferrothorn made Regigigas an absolute beefcake, while Macargo made him this demonic creature. Alakazam's magic looked cooler than ever. Clinklang also made this amazing fusion with the Titan. Genesect made a pretty cool fusion with Shininja, and Ho-Oh became another JoJo reference with Machop. Now the final four are all on the team. Arceus and Giratina made this evil god I just had to keep and Zekrom with Scizor became an absolute monster. The last two are custom fusions that I made in honor of a recently popular game. Machamp and Darkrai made Ganon from The Legend of Zelda, and Dialga and Gallade made the Hero of Time Link. Let me know what you guys think of the new custom fusions like Ganon and Link, and if you want to download them yourselves, make sure to check out the Discord, as members and Patreons of the channel can download these, as well as any future custom fusions that we make. We're planning on doing a ton of future content involving making fusions that are suggested by you guys, so make sure if you're interested in that and you want these fusions, to join in. With that, our new team was born. Here's a quick recap. Comment below if you know what their nicknames reference. As we pushed on through the mountain, through the snow, and the dark cave, we finally came to where Cynthia was waiting. Having gone ahead, she'd seen the powerful Pokemon and was fleeing, not wanting us to go on. In true hero fashion, we battled her to let us forward to face the challenge ahead. Our demise quickly fainted due to a hurricane and confusion, so Cosmo had to come in and finish off her first Pokemon. Unfortunately, her Chandelcross then easily wiped out our entire team with ease, leaving only Dinral left to beat it with Surf. We then defeated the next several Pokemon using Shadow Force and Surf, barely winning the battle with our evil god. Cynthia graciously heals our Pokemon and we head forward. Suddenly, we're overcome with this heavy weight, and even with speed up, 
we slow down to a painful crawl as we head towards the source of the power. Finally reaching it, we find that it was a triple fusion of Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina, all with their own health bars, all able to attack every turn. We try to defeat it, but it is just too strong and wipes us out before doing hardly any damage to it. But as a champion, we won't give up. Unfortunately, the terrible slowness effect stuck around, so making our way back took forever. While exploring the cave trying to get back to Cynthia, we ran into Larry, our rival, who was also lost, and he challenged us to a battle. His gear nub went down to Cosmo's Fire Fang, and then his starter Togekin came in and knocked us out. That also knocked out Ganon, so finally we sent in Dinral to take it out with Surf. We then recover stalled and managed to take out his Meowth fusion. This freaky Volcarona fusion knocked us out. Luckily, we were able to take it down to red with Hylia before finishing it off with 15 HP on Link. We also avoided play rough, and with only Link remaining, we defeated our rival. After what felt like hours, we made our way back to the Triple Fusion Legend. This time, leveled up and we led with Ganon. Using Dark Void, we put two of them to sleep and tried to use Nightmare, but unfortunately, Giratina woke up to knock us out. Cosmo then managed to burn Giratina before fainting as well. Dinral then was able to do massive damage with two Shadow Forces that brought Dialga to red, with Giratina about to faint from its burn. Unfortunately, Demise fainted immediately to a roar of time, but Hylia was able to finish off Dialga with Moonblast. Giratina then fainted from its burn and she was able to bring Palkia low enough for Link to come in and Roar of Time Palkia, defeating the monstrous fusion. As we reached our hand out into the void that then appeared, we seemed to jump forward into the future. Suddenly, Gold appeared to challenge us. What a fun twist of events. Ganon managed to take out his first Pokemon, but fell to Rocky Helmet. Then, Cosmo eventually fell to his Gardetto due to heal stalling. Luckily, Demise took it out with Fusion Bolt, and Dinral quickly took out his Rapish with Shadow Force. Zapbok managed to survive Aurora Time and take out Link with Drill Peck, but Hylia came in to finish the job with Psychic. Sepom proved to be kind of hard to take out for Hylia and she fell. Luckily, Demise was waiting in the back with an X-Scissor with his name on it. Gold's final Pokemon was this Milotic Vaporeon fusion and with two fusion bolts it fell, defeating Gold. And suddenly we were teleported home. And with that, I guess we defeated Johto. If I missed any amazing legendary fusions or you want a fusion suggestion to be featured in a future video, drop it in the comments or come visit the Discord. In the meantime, you guys are awesome. Peace.